Volume 14, Number 7, Canada Gazette, Part 3, Ottawa, Wednesday, February 19, 1992. Chapter 46, An Act Respecting Banks and Banking. Debt obligation means a bond, debenture, note, or other evidence of indebtedness of an entity, whether th secured or unsecured. Canada, Bills of Exchange Act. In the Bills of Exchange Act, a note means a promissory note. Financial Administration Act of Canada. Financial Administration Act of Canada, money, phone. Money includes, so you notice that word includes, negotiable instruments. Now, negotiable instruments affect the commerce. Negotiable instruments includes, notice that word again, any check, draft, traveler's check, bill of exchange, postal note, money order, postal remittance, and any other similar instrument. That's what money is. It's not just what you think you're carrying in your wallet with a picture of the queen. Money is any negotiable instrument. Bank of Canada Act, it says notes, means notes intended for circulation in Canada. So, notes. So there's a lot of people here in Canada, in Quebec, that think this here, this stuff here, is the only thing that's money. This is not the only thing that's money here in Canada. This is one form of money that we can use, but there are other forms of money that we can use than just this. Now, money is a banknote, as I just showed you. It's 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 dollars, and so on. In the, in the Financial Administration Act, it states that money includes. Now notice it says includes. If you understand what that's saying, it says it includes negotiable instruments. So then money is any negotiable instrument. That constitutes money. Okay, it's not just dollar bills in your pocket. Now, in the same act, Financial Administration Act, it says a negotiable instrument includes. And notice again, they use the same word, includes. So they're really tightening this all down right now. It says any check, any draft, any money order, any stamp, or look, bill of exchange is considered money. So, according to their own regulations, money is not just what you carry in your pocket. Money is any negotiable instruments. And negotiable instruments are, as the list follows, any check, any draft, any money order, any bill of exchange, and the code actually says, and any other instrument that can be used in this term. So, it leaves open for a broad range of what money is. So according to Financial Administration Act, money is any bill of exchange. When you jump into the Bill of Exchange Act, you'll see that a note, what they title to be a note, means a promissory note. So your bill of exchange, in the form of a promissory note, is actually money. It's pretty clear, because they say that any negotiable instrument is to be considered money. They state that a bill of exchange is a negotiable instrument. So you jump into the Bill of Exchange Act and you see that a bill of exchange, it means a promissory note. A note means a promissory note. So therefore, when you sign a promissory note or a loan agreement with the bank, you are creating money. Now you think that you are borrowing money from the bank, but you are not. You are creating money. You are creating an asset for the bank. This is a loan documentation that I got from the bank when I applied for what I thought was a loan from the bank in 2008. You zoom in. Now you see it's from the Bank of Montreal. It says full name of borrower. It's dated. Now look at the top there where it says personal loan and promissory note. So this is a personal loan and a promissory note together. Now, now notice section A 
it states applicable to all loans. So here we go. You promise to pay to the order of bank at the branch named above the principal sum of $20,000. You will pay the principal interest and if applicable life and or disability insurance by paying $254.54 every two weeks starting on October 10th blah 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 so you promise to pay $20,000 to the bank the bank hasn't mentioned that they're gonna lend me any money yet all that this document has said is that I promise to pay them $20,000 so this is the page that they get you to sign when you think that you're applying for a loan but you're really creating a promissory note and this promissory note is increasing the assets of the bank now, I want to show you something here if you look closely that would be the signature of myself and my wife I just changed the names obviously now when you scroll to the right look at this there's a third signature you see that but now look at the title of the person who signed this I'm supposed to be taking a loan from the bank right so you would expect a bank representative of the BMO someone under that title would sign with me but look it says the only person who signed on this promissory note was a witness you see that it doesn't say bank representative it doesn't say BMO representative it just simply says witness well anybody in the free man organization they understand what a witness to a documentation is so she had no, nothing to do with this documentation she just witnessed the creation of it well then if she didn't sign and she didn't create it who created this promissory note and under what authority it was your signature that created this promissory note not the banks and you are not under obligation to pay the back the bank back anything for a promissory note you actually gave an asset to the bank so as you saw you go to the bank and you get a loan for twenty thousand dollars and you think you're entering to a contract where the bank is going to actually go into their vault remove twenty thousand dollars and lend that money to you so you can do it what you need to do with it it's not the case at all what happens is when you go to see the agent of the bank what you are creating is a promissory note that's what gets created a promissory note and under the bills of exchange and under the acts of Canada a promissory note is indeed money it's money so that's why when you look at the paperwork that I showed you the bank never signed on this promissory note in an official form as a representative of the bank they only signed as a witness that I was creating a promissory note or I was creating money now at the time when I performed this action I didn't understand what I was doing I didn't know what I was doing I was like everybody else I thought I was entering into a loan and not actually creating an asset for the bank now I know the difference I'm suing the banks and I'm fighting the bank one bank specifically in the civil court of Quebec this is from the office of the superintendent of financial institutions for Canada it's a guideline supposed to be for capital adequacy requirements or reserve funds that the banks must have the expected impact of the projected growth on profitability and risk-based capital ratios increased authorized multiples will not exceed 23 times capital so whoever heard about the multiplication factor that the banks are using here it is it says that increased authorized multiplies will not exceed 23 times the capital so they can place a multiplication factor upon your deposit of up to 23 times now through that promissory note the money that I created as you see the bank can apply a multiplication factor upon that money to enrich themselves up to 23 times it says so they can do 20,000 and add a multiplication factor upon that up to 23 times Paul Martin the ex finance minister and ex prime minister of Canada I recently saw where he said that in 1995 he tightened up the bank ratios to a 7 to 1 multiplication factor that may be the case however the information that I showed you recently is newer information and they changed that regulation again it seems to allow a multiplication factor upon deposits of up to 23 times even seven times is bad enough 
but I'm under the impression it is at, still at 23 times now. Canada's private banks have no reserve re requirements. Article 457. Subject to this section, a bank that was in existence immediately prior to the day this section comes into force shall maintain a primary reserve in the form of, and then it states the reserve they have to have, coins with a face value of $2 or less that are current under the Currency Act, Bank of Canada notes or deposits in Canadian currency with the Bank of Canada. On the first day of the first month following the month, this section comes into force. The primary reserve referred to in subsection 2 shall be reduced by 3%. And thereafter, on the first day of the first month of each of the next three succeeding six-month periods, the primary reserve as modified by this subsection, shall re be reduced by 3%. And on the first day of the 25th month following the month in which this section comes into force, the primary reserve referred to in subsection 1 shall be nil or zero. Bank of Canada Statement of Financial Position as of November 30th, 2011. Now we scroll down to liabilities and equities. Now look where it says bank notes in circulation. 58,422. You see the number there? 58,422. Now that has to be multiplied, you see, by millions of dollars. So bank notes, that means the notes that you carry in your wallet that represents the queen. They say that there's 58,442 times a million. Bank notes in circulation for 2010, 57,874 times a million. So according to the Bank of Canada's own financial report that they released, in 2010, the number of bank notes that was out in circulation, the money, the ones that we carry in our wallet, was 57 billion. 874 million. In 2011, the number of banknotes that was out in circulation, the ones we carry in our wallet, banknotes just like this, was 58,422,000,000. million. Total household credit, November 2011, in Canada. The outstanding is in billions of dollars. So the total household credit is 1,589 times a billion. The chartered banks hold 401 times a billion of that amount. The chartered banks also hold 823 times a, a billion of the residential mortgage credit. This is the total overview of Canada's business credit, November 2011. Total business credit is 1,301 times a billion. Chartered banks have 257 of that. And again, long-term business credit, chartered banks have 39 times a billion of that. So this here is the credit that business has. The information provided by StatScan, it says that the total business credit on loan for 2011, November, was one trillion three hundred and one billion dollars being loaned out to businesses. The total household credit, household credit, people, families that are taking credit, credit cards, mortgages, personal loans, car loans, was one trillion five hundred and eighty nine billion dollars. So together with business and household, the total amount of loans that are out circulating in Canada is close to three trillion dollars. It's supposed to be. But yet we only have 58 billion physical dollars or bank notes from the Bank Note of Canada, such as hundred dollar bills and fifty dollar bills. So if there's only 58 billion dollars circulating, but there's close to three trillion dollars in debt, what did the bank lend out? It's impossible that the bank lent out real notes. 
where did this money come from? Like most of you, when I applied for my loan, I was under the impression that when I went to the bank, they were taking money, withdrawing money from their account, from their vault, lending me this money and putting up something, some consideration. That's not the case. Most of these amounts are created electronically through the stroke of a computer, computer keyboard. There's nothing that the bank is putting up. The bank does not suffer any loss and the bank will not suffer any damage if you walk away from these accounts. They are deceiving us when we are signing up for these accounts. They are acting in bad faith and they are not fully disclosing what is going on. They are not telling us and informing us that we are creating this money through a promissory note. They are not obligated to tell us because he who is ignorant of the law, it is his fault and let him remain ignorant. So presently, it, worth, it is worth repeating that there is only $58 billion of notes circulating in Canada, but there is close to $3 trillion of apparent loans that the bank has loaned out. The bank created all this money artificially through a computer. Why will you obligate your life to them? Why will you work hard and take away from your family to return to the bank something that they created out of thin air? This is not justifiable. This is wrong to be treating the people of Canada like this. And there is a way to escape it in the court system. So this doesn't really take a rocket scientist to see that the business loans and the household loans way, way surpass any amount of money that's out there. If there's only $58 billion out there, where did all this money come from? Where did it all come from? Electronically generated by the stroke of a keyboard using a multiplication factor. Thereby, no consideration on behalf of the bank, no damage that the bank can claim, and freedom from someone who can present this whole situation to a judge about what's going on. So the final rundown on all this is that we, as people, persons, human beings, men, women, we go to the bank and we ask for a loan. And instead of getting a loan, what we actually get tricked into doing is creating a promissory note. And a promissory note is a bill of exchange. And a bill of exchange is a negotiable instrument. And a negotiable instrument is money. And we created money for the bank through our negotiable instrument, our promissory note. We created money, we gave the bank an asset. We enriched the bank. They then applied a multiplication factor of up to 23 times upon the original request that you made. So we gave the bank even a greater asset. So that's why when we go to the bank, we think we're entering into a contract for a loan, but we're not. We're actually creating a promissory note. There's no signature from the bank representative on the promissory note. There might be in some certain cases when it's for a house or otherwise, but it doesn't matter. This whole situation remains the same. They're creating money artificially. But there's no signature, as you've seen on my particular form, only a witness, and that witness was for a promissory note. So that person didn't sign as a representative of the bank. They signed as a witness to the promissory note. And I created the money for the bank to give to me. And then they told me, well, thank you for creating this money for me. Thank you for letting me apply a multiplication factor upon it. All this is being done on the computer bookkeeping. It's not real money. But you go out and work real hard, and every time you get a paycheck for the hours that you put into your work, come back and give me this 200 and whatever dollars per month or per two, every two weeks, and pay back this artificial amount. That's Canada's banking system for you. We need a reconstruction of this system, and it's quite possible, but that's for, I guess, another time.
Take care everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you to understand what's going on and how they're trapping us.